Hi, it's me, Daphne. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, and if you're not new, thanks for coming to watch another video. Today, I'm gonna tell you all my reading stats and the best and worst books I read so far this year by doing the mid-year freak out tag. If you end up enjoying the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already. And you can also find me on Instagram at Daphne Ginn. So let's get into the video. So as I'm filming this, it's at the end of July. So far, I've read 31 books this year. I'm pretty pleased with myself. That's way more than I thought I would be able to read up to this point. Plus, I've been reading some shorter page count books since I've been using my digital library and I got a Kindle, so. Ah, I love the Kindle, love it. Getting access to the New York Public Library and using the Libby app, which shout out to Libby. This isn't sponsored, but if you don't know about Libby already, it's an app where you can down, like you just put in your library card and then you can download books for free from your library. And it's amazing. And it made my reading count go up so much these last couple months. So for star ratings, I've had one one star, three two stars, 14 three stars, 10 four stars, and three five stars, which makes my average star rating 3.35, which sounds kind of harsh. Like I don't give out a lot of five stars. I feel like I give a decent amount of four stars out, but man, I've given a lot of three stars out. I was surprised. So the next stat I wanna tell you about is the genres I've been reading. I've read two contemporary fictions, two sci-fi fantasies, uh, one nonfiction, and 26 romance. So that doesn't tell you something about me, now you know. <laughs> like, I already knew I loved romance, but it's just like, wow. Out of 31 books, 26 were romance, okay. So because there were so many romance books, I wanted to break down the subgenres in the romance books. So out of those 26, I read one paranormal romance, two contemporary romances, 12 fantasy, eight historical, and three sci-fi romances. And those are all the stats I cared to share with you. So let's get into the mid-year freakout tag. So the first question on the tag is, what was the best book you've read so far this year? And I picked two. I picked Trevor Noah, Born a Crime, and The Raven Prince by Elizabeth Holt. Trevor Noah's book was really eye-opening, and the romance book was really fun and steamy, and I felt for the characters a lot. So the next question is the best sequel I've read so far this year, and I picked Breath of Fire by Amanda Bouchette. It's the second book in a series, fantasy romance. It's about kind of this chosen one and her adventures in this world that has like Greek gods, but it's like a totally like made up world and there's a really cool magical element. She has cool powers and this super sexy warlord guy. So the next question is a new release that I want to read but haven't read yet. And for this, I picked She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. This book just came out in July. I've had this on my Amazon wish list for months. This book has been described as a Mulan meets the Song of Achilles. Oh man, the synopsis is so good. I'm just gonna read a little bit to you because I'm not gonna be able to remember it. But it says, when the Zhu family's eighth born son, Zhu Chongba is given a fate of greatness. Everyone is mystified as to how it will come to pass. But, but like, I'm gonna skip ahead. But like, that guy dies and our main heroine takes over his identity, her brother's identity. And it's like, oh, he was fated because it's really her fate. I don't know, it just sounds so good. And I'm really excited about it. I hope that made a little bit of sense. I highly recommend looking up the synopsis online. The next question is the most anticipated book for, the next question is my most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I've been dying to get my hands on the paperback version of The Burning God by R.F. Kuang. It's the third book in the Poppy War trilogy. I have the first and second book in paperback already and the paperback version doesn't come out until November. So I'm really excited about that. So these are the first two books. They're just beautiful and I wanna get the matching paperback when it comes out in November. 
The next question is the biggest disappointment. And I'm gonna have to go with In a Holidays by Christina Lauren and In the Quick by Kate Hope Day. Christina Lauren is a romance author I've read in the past and really, really enjoyed, but her later stuff is just not that good. It is not slapping. I don't usually say that, but like I felt like it was the vibe right now. But yeah, it was trash. Um, I talked about it in another video, I'm pretty sure. Don't recommend made no freaking sense. And then this book, I won in a Goodreads giveaway. It's like a sci-fi about a woman astronaut and she's supposed to like try to save these missing passengers. But like there was like no action. Where was the action? I was just so let down. Like the synopsis did not match with what was in the context of the book. For my expectations so i was very disappointed though the cover is beautiful and i have it displayed on my shelf because it's a stunning cover so the next question is the biggest surprise and for this one i picked a court of mist and fury by sarah j mass this book is super super popular it's the second book in a court of thorns and roses series i said this is my biggest surprise because honestly i just wanted to read this series because it's always talked about on the internet and i was like i just want to know what everybody's talking about i don't expect to love it it's like people either absolutely love it or absolutely hate it it feels like on the internet so it's like let me just see for myself the first book was trash two stars and then the second book i was like oh my god this is actually kind of good four stars like legitimately i thought it was really good and i was very surprised next is favorite new author whether that be a debut or new to me and for this i picked new to me and i went with elizabeth holt i binged a few of her historical romances from the library the first book five stars loved it and then as the series went on it kind of star ratings kind of went down but i still really like her writing style and i'd be interested to read more from her all right so the next question is newest fictional crush and for this i went with Harry from The Leopard Prince by Elizabeth Holt. And Harry was amazing. What a stunning love interest. What a stunning man. He's amazing. I love him. Five stars for Harry. <laughs> Next question is new favorite character. And I didn't really have like a new favorite character, but I wanted to shout out this book. So I picked Buck from Black Buck by Matteo Ascarapore. Definitely didn't say that name right, I'm so sorry. But yeah, Black Buck was an emotional read for me. And like, even if Buck made mistakes, I was always on his side, I always had his back. I was like, ride or die for Buck. So I picked him as my new favorite character. Also, Chase loved that book, he rated five stars. Oh, and it's like about um, like racism in corporate America, pretty much. Just to put it simply. And it was infuriating. Okay, so the next prompt is a book that made you cry, and this was very easy for me to choose. I picked A Man Called Ove by Frederick Backman. He's the same man that wrote Anxious People, which was my favorite book from last year. And it's just a sweet book about like a grumpy old man who's more than just a grumpy old man. And I wouldn't say the plot is like stellar or anything, but just like the emotional impact of this old man. I was just crying constantly throughout the book. It'd be like one line, I'd be laughing. And then two sentences later, I'm like tearing up. It, I think Frederick Backman might be like my new favorite author. And I couldn't have picked him for this prompt because I read him last year. So it's not like for this year or for the other prompts, you know? But I did pick up another book from him. I picked up Bear Town, and I'm excited to eventually get to that when I'm in the mood. All right, so next is a book that made me happy. And for this, I picked A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is the second book in of from Blood and Ash series. I picked this one because I read from Blood and Ash and then I was like super hyped to read the second one because it like left you on a crazy cliffhanger and I was just super hyped to read the second one and I had a fun time. It's a fantasy romance. There's a lot of mystery and like things are real are revealed to you as the book goes on. So I'm not gonna like tell you that much about it, but it's fun. All right, so the second to last question is the most beautiful book I've bought or received so far this year. And I kind of cheated. I wanted to pick three and give three a shout out. So like I said before, In the Quick is a beautiful book. It's just so beautiful. It's like this 
floating astronaut in this pink planet and chef's kiss, beautiful. And then I wanted to shout out a book, a used book I got down in my basement, my mom's basement. She loaned me this book. She said it was so, so, so good. And I featured it here on my bookcase. And that is The Pillar of the Earth by Ken Follett. But yeah, I just think it's beautiful. It has a bit of a ring, like a coffee ring or something on it. But like, that's just because my mom used and loved it. But I just think it's very beautiful. It's like this cathedral imaging. I know the story is about a man building or like painting a cathedral, something like that. But it's more than that. Apparently it's like very dramatic. Jess that does like the the book community videos recently read this and she loved it. And I was like, oh my God, I just picked that up for my mom. So that just made me that much more excited to read it. It is a big boy and I know there are some like graphic scenes in here apparently, but I just think it's beautiful. So I featured it. And then the last book I wanna feature for being beautiful, I just picked up from Barnes and Noble the other day, which is Colleen Hoover's It Ends With Us. I just think this cover is so beautiful like it's nothing like that mind-blowing but it's just like pink and i just love it but yeah i've never read a colleen hoover book i know she does some like very dramatic romances with like kind of dark themes sometimes so i'm excited to give this one a try it has amazing reviews on goodreads i don't know if that's because it's like culty for Colleen Hoover, but I'm excited to give Colleen Hoover a try. All right, so the last question on the tag is what books do I need to read before the end of the year? And I've picked The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I've had this book on my shelf for a good, good while. I know it's got like great reviews. Chase even read it and he really liked it. He gave it four stars and I keep telling him I'm gonna read it and I like put my bookmark in it and everything and I just haven't even read the first page. <laughs> but I really, really need to read it soon because Chase wants to talk to me about it and I love talking books with him. I just have to make time to do it. It's hard to make time though when you keep taking out library books and they expire so you have to read them quickly and prioritize them. So, whoops. I have one library book. I had one library book out and I was like, oh babe, like after I finish reading this one, I'm gonna start reading The Vanishing Half. And then I had put in a request for the Brown Sisters trilogy and Get a Life Chloe Brown just became available to me like yesterday. So now I have to read that too before I get to The Vanishing Half. <laughs> because I can read books pretty quickly, like if they're romance, but if they're not romance, it tends to take me a bit longer, like half a month to more than a month. But a romance I can read in like three days at the most. But yeah, so it keeps getting pushed back and I definitely have to read it before the end of the year. So those are all my stats and all my answers to the mid-year freakout tag. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and if you want to, subscribe down below. I'd really appreciate it and I will see you in another video. Bye.